So next up, we have Mark, who's going to talk about the truth of near space balloons and how your kids can make them. Ready? Bye. Go. <laughs> All right, so my name is Mark. I'm going to talk to you about near space balloons. Uh, a lot of people have launched one uh, in the last few uh, last few years. It's become more and more popular. Um, I did, and I know a couple of you uh, guys have done it. I'm going to tell you why it's awesome and uh, what you should do with it. <laughs> okay, so why is it so great? It's because we get great pictures, and we love to send great stuff in space. Uh, <laughs> sushi. <laughs> Uh, a DVD, a phone, uh, a Lego man, and uh, a Lego shuttle. Okay, so uh, the media love it. It's everywhere. On BBC, Times, New York. We went, to, we went to space, went to outer space. A plane fall um, to Earth from orbit. So no one knows where space starts, apparently. Or there's a lot of interns in the magazines. <laughs> where does it start? Okay, uh, internationally, it's recognized at 62 miles. It's 100 kilometers. The, U, the lowest possible definition is 50 miles. That's for X-15 pilots in the 60s who uh, went up to, uh, up to those uh, spaces. Okay, so most flights go up to 100,000 feet. That's about 19 miles. Okay, 1962, but very far from space. So we need to emphasize it's near space. Why? Because they say that students beat NASA on beer money budget. <laughs> That's not true, okay? All right, the good news about it is that it's awesome. It's fairly cheap. It's a few hundred dollars. We're talking about five hundred dollars to to uh, send a altitude balloon. It can be done quickly, a couple of weeks, uh, and it's not that hard. Even I did it, so you guys can. Make it. Uh, if you want to launch one, uh, don't listen to all those naysayers. It's legal. It's re regulated, but it's not as easy as you may uh, look at it, especially in the city credit card commercial. Uh, it's actually uh, fairly hard. But what do you need? You need a half the weather balloon that you can buy online, a helium tank, a parachute, uh, and some kind of uh, device to track it. Whether it's cheap or it's expensive, you need to find it back. Because what's better than uh, launching it is retrieving it. Uh, you also need to call the FAA. It's easier uh, than you think. You just call them and you let them know where you're going to launch it and uh, when. And relax, they don't know much about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how it works, they don't know the, don't know the regulations. Uh, how it works, you fill this balloon with helium, you attach it to a pre-deployed parachute, which is attached to a capsule. The capsule contains your tracker, okay? It goes up, the balloon bursts, and it goes down. Uh, and then you retrieve it and you're happy. Uh, it takes about two and a half hours for the, for the, the round trip, an hour and a half up, uh, an hour down. Uh, between uh, your Max altitude and 65,000 feet, there's no air, so it's in free fall, and you're reaching 120 uh, miles per hour. That's my uh, first flight. Uh, that's the altitude uh, about 100, 110,000 feet. Three cameras, three uh, tracking systems, because I was paranoid, and uh, one camera <laughs> system. Uh, second second uh, launch. This is San Francisco. Oh, wow. That's the Golden Gate, that's the Bay Bridge. <laughs> Do it because it's awesome. Because if you do this with your parents or if you do this with some friends, you'll create bonds because you will be freaking out when a capsule is above San Francisco in free fall. Uh, <laughs> and it's the best thing that you can possibly do because uh, what can this kid do, space related, that will give them instant results, jaw dropping pictures? Just nothing like this. It's cheap. Uh, it's, it's fairly easy to do, and look at his eyes. He's super <laughs> excited. <laughs> uh, and it teaches a lot of things. It teaches, okay, uh, how can I take what I learned in school and apply this to those real life problems? I need to send this balloon. I need to take pictures. How do I take pictures? I need to heat the system. How do I heat it? Uh, how much helium do I need? Uh, most people do this once. They launch it, they're happy, they will never do it again. No, if you do it and you like it and it worked, you're going to improve it. You're going to put uh, solar panels. You're going to work on the telemetry. Um, and you build this, you test it, and you fly it, and you get quick wins. Within a month, you, you, you send it, you retrieve it, and you're happy. Let's do it again. Let's make it more complex. It will create momentum. It will create ambition, motivation. You're like, I can do this. I've done this two or three times. This is uh, Felix Baumgartner who skydived from 71,000 feet a few weeks back. Yeah. I showed this picture to this 12-year-old kid who sent uh, a balloon. 
uh, with her dad. I showed this picture and I was like, what do you think about it? Is it awesome? And she was like, yeah, it's all right. I was like, what do you mean it's all right? <laughs> she, she looked at it a little better. She was like, yeah, whatever. I was like, what do you mean whatever? I was like, well, the capsule is a little bigger than mine. And there's two cameras and the guy. But he went to 21,000 feet. Mine went to 112,000 feet. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. I was like, yeah, high five. Although you, you're 12 and you're a rock star. That's the future of NASA and the future of space exploration. And this is why all your kids should do it. Thank you.